Hello and welcome to Dizzy Red Panda Podcast, a podcast about all the crafting projects that have us dizzy with excitement. This week we have knitting and scheming. I'm Katie. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, which is at the very tip of Lake Superior. And on Ravelry and Instagram, I'm known as Nerdy in Plaid. And I'm Cheryl, just outside St. Paul, Minnesota. You can find me on Ravelry as Red and Instagram as Red Knitter. Show notes and links can be found down below in the drop down bar. And if you have any questions about anything, let us know and leave us a comment. I'm going to let you know right away at the beginning of this episode that editing is going to be minimal. So normally I put in like, like bars down here about what the yarn is, what the project is. I'm not doing that this time. Um, I'm at the end of the semester, which means I have more things to do than time to do them in. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of lazy editing this episode. So I apologize for that. And it should be fixed. Maybe not next episode, but the episode after that. <laughs> We do this for fun, so... We do. Yeah. It's fun. I'm fine with that. So this is the half of this podcast who does not do any of the editing <laughs> or administrative work. Uh, yet. <laughs> when you mm. finish your dissertation, that might change. <laughs> well, good thing that'll be a while. <laughs> You're like, oh, darn. <laughs> All right. So um, a little bit... I have an apology to make to the world yeah, I was at large. Yeah, hoping would. So Let's hear last episode, I maybe got a little too hopeful, cocky, enthusiastic, <laughs> fine, arrogant <laughs> about how spring had arrived in Duluth. Um. So that episode went out on Wednesday. That Thursday, we got a stupid amount of snow like I think it's safe to call it a blizzard um it, it actually was a blizzard here we had whiteout conditions yeah we did as well uh we had can we just pause for people sure. who don't know um a blizzard doesn't just mean a lot of snow it also means yeah. that there's a lot of blowing with that snow making it dangerous to get around because you can't see very far I think a lot of people, including in Minnesota, will call a lot of snow a blizzard, and that's not the same thing. Very true. Thank you. Are you going to join the National Weather Service anytime soon? I mean, okay, so you said that it was spring. Belinda Jensen, who is a meteorologist down here and has been for a very long time, said that she had put away her winter clothes. I had not put away my winter clothes because I knew something was coming still, and I am not a meteorologist, so I feel like Maybe I missed my calling. I stopped wearing my winter coat just out of stubbornness. I'll just put, put it out there. It was still out because I had to bring it out on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to wear it. Yep. So we ended up getting about eight inches of really heavy, icy, slushy snow. Um, mm -hmm. They ended up canceling and closing campus Thursday afternoon and then all day on Friday um, mm -hmm. because we had horizontal snow. Um, there were many trees that are were down, and you can still drive around seeing them. So I apologize for that. I have been punished for my hopefulness, including that the plow came in front of my driveway while I was out on Saturday, um, and I got the pile of ice and slush <laughs> in front of my driveway, like where I park in my driveway, and it was really, really heavy, and I couldn't shovel it because my shovel was going to break and I couldn't park in my driveway until well this week probably Wednesday or Thursday <laughs> I was punished <laughs> okay. well I hope you're sorry for what you've done I am I again. am I'm not going to even tell you how beautiful it is here today no it's stunning here too it's a great day we were at the zoo this morning it's oh nice hmm. were there any red pandas out and about we were at the Como Zoo, which does not have red pandas, but it does have giraffes and polar bears. It does. So. And it ha does have a beautiful conservatory as well. Yeah, we um, Everett was sniffing the flowers in the conservatory. <laughs> it was pretty adorable. That is pretty adorable. All right. Um, someone also has a birthday coming up. I do. This week. Do you have yeah. any special plans for that or not? Yeah. I have made some demands. <laughs> um, 
requests is what I called them to his face, but they're demands. Um, so we have a relatively new donut shop in town, nice. which is um, which is part of a chain. It's called Duck Donuts that I think hmm. is mostly not here. I can't remember which states it comes from, but I don't I don't know if there's another one here in Minnesota. I think I think it's pretty unusual for here, but it's like it's like a donut shop that that's like you know cold stone or chipotle or whatever like made to order donuts that are so like they're all these little cake donuts and then they have like all kinds of frosting and toppings and stuff like that and you know they do it right there in front of you so that's very exciting when you have a little person with you or you know you me likes donuts (laughs) yeah so i have demanded that those be around because I checked they open at 6 30 in the morning on weekdays wow that is, that is early up. that is an early morning yep so I will be sending my husband straight out the door after we get up in the morning well after he gets up in the morning and I have also requested breakfast tacos so really it's like a very morning oriented birthday it really is I don't really care about the rest of it <laughs> <laughs> nice I I like it <laughs> All right, um, let's jump in because we have a discussion to have today. Yeah, we do. Um, all right, so what are you wearing? I have I got that on at the same time you did. Yeah, um, I've got this is the Saroyan shawl <laughs> out of three Irish girls adorn sock and Bellini. So I wore this because this was a birthday cast on many years ago. Um, but I don't wear it very much because it's like, I need help with how <laughs> to do it because it's like, it's a shawl, but it's really more of a scarf because it's like a yeah. super long, skinny one. But I really like the little leaf pattern on the edges and I really like the yarn, but I just like, it doesn't get a lot of wear because I feel like I can't like zhuzh it right. So I don't know how I can make it better. So I decided to wear it today. Because it's it feels like spring here, and it's a happy shop. <laughs> I really like it. I um, all of her patterns are now free. That oh, designer. Um, I forgot what her name is, but Liz Abenanti or something like that. Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce her last um, name. But she yeah. does the traveling woman. She did the traveling mm-hmm. woman shawl, and she also did that one. And I believe all of her patterns are free now. Because she stopped being a That's senior. interesting. Because um, I was going to teach one of hers for a class. And she had like some pretty stiff re- restrictions on like you had to contact her and request even though it was a pay for pattern. Hmm. So I wound, I actually wound up not teaching it because it was just like too much red tape for me to teach a class. I agree. Um, that's I, interesting. Yeah. She, yeah. Um, I think she said that she didn't do that. She wasn't offering really any pattern support. So mm, got it. Why. She's kind of moved on. Yeah, so she's, yeah, moved on from that. All right, so I'm not wearing anything knitted today. All right, so any FOs? I have nothing because I had my parade last episode, so. Uh, I have nothing either. Um, I haven't had a ton of knitting time this week, in the last couple of weeks, but also I'm working on other big projects, so. Yeah. No hats in like three weeks. I've, I haven't knit a hat in like three weeks. I know. I'm Are a little concerned. Are you having too. withdrawal symptoms? Uh, no, because I'm having cast onitis in other areas. So Okay, so let me hear about that. What are you working on? Okay, so um, I have gotten bitten by the sweater bug, which I'll talk about in a minute. Yay! So, like, in an obsessive way. I'm um, so happy. So Deshane is what I showed last week. It was the light blue. Um, I had just seamed block it. I'm blocked it so that I could put the shoulder seams together. I'm in the process of sewing the, um, doing a three needle bind off on the shoulder seam. So that's not ready to show at all. Um, that's about all I've done on that. Um, my theme for the next few weeks, or at least for the next couple of episodes is simple because I keep screwing things up that aren't, well, that are even mildly more challenging than stupidly simple. So this is one that I talked about for my pre-knitting last Mm -hmm. week. This is the beginning of a crescent shawl. So it's a beginning of a garter crescent shawl. Um, This is Odyssey by 
uh, Hoki Locatelli. And this is her DK weight uh, free shawl pattern that's really popular. So it uses three skeins. So I'll, I'm clearly on the first. Oh, and I'm... Oh, I am showing the right side. It's garter. It really doesn't matter that much. So I'm, this is um, a Lavender Loon yarn and Lavender Loon is on Etsy. Our local yarn shop carries it. Um, and this is her DK weight in, I think it's Sap, Sap Moon. So let's see if we can get her, do the professional thing, get her logo to show. <laughs> we'll see. That just looks really squishy, even on it camera. Is. I want to touch that. Yeah, it's a superwash merino. Oh, superwash merino nylon and cashmere. Did not notice that part. So it's really nice and squishy, and I really love knitting with it. Um, it's a little pink for me, but I really do love all of these like obnoxiously bright pops of green in there. Um, I do love it. Um, I started the lace part for like right before you go into the color change um for the pattern and you do this thing where you have like a yarn over let's see with a whole bunch of stitches you make into it or you well it's a mm -hmm. bar you pick up and then um I'm off by two stitches um. and and it's enough that the pattern isn't going to be centered so I'm going to take out mm -hmm. the whole I don't know how I got off um, so I'm going to take out the whole thing and just kind of adjust everything over by one stitch so that it will be a balanced stitch on either side. Uh, I did that one last, I attempted that one last night and screwed it up twice. So that's now the third time I'm taking out that rather simple row. Like it's, <laughs> so that's where I'm going with that one. It's not hard. It's not, well, it's a very well-written pattern as Hokies patterns are. Um, should I do another one? Yeah, do another one. All right. So um, the last thing that I'm actively working on, I needed, again, super simple. Um, and this was, um, this is a pattern that I also talked about last week. It's called, um, I think it's Talum by Sylvia McFadden. So soft sweater. Um, it is a cropped sport weight kind of open pattern, but you start at the bottom and then you knit stuck in it forever in a loop, in a tube. So this is what I'm doing. Oh, it's a little bit is brighter. It, on blue? it is Katie blue. It is a little bit darker than actual Katie blue. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's an AB. So this is reading a little bit brighter on screen. Um, so dark Katie blue. <laughs> um, this is Knit Picks Cotlin, which I've never used before. So it's a cotton linen blend. I think it's a 70-30 blend um, from Knit Picks, and it's a DK weight. And it's what I got gauge on. I actually did a gauge swatch of something else I was going to use, but I couldn't get the gauge right. So I tried this, and on the first kind of try I got the right gauge so it's the just the stockinette tube right now um I I didn't want to I wasn't sure how long I wanted to make it so I wanted to knit up and finish mm -hmm. the body and you know do the top and then go knit back down so see how many directions I can knit so what I did was I just did a crocheted cast on and that's what that red is um so that when I take, it's a provisional cast on. Um, so when I take that out, I can knit the rest of the way down and put the ribbing on where I want to. Um, so it's a really easy, it's easy so far because it's just stuck in it. I'm mm. on my third skein. So each skein is 50 grams. So it has a nice open, pretty open yeah. weave. I'm doing this on a size nine needle. So it's going pretty fast. Um, something I did notice was... Um, Cotton, this does um, make my hands, I wouldn't say it hurts my hands, but it tires them out more quickly. So I can't work on this as much as I could work on my shawl, for example, um, mm -hmm. just because it does tire my hands out. And I yep. notice that they get really stiff and no matter how much I stretch, mm -hmm. I have to actually stop working on it. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, <laughs> the actual note on the show notes is, let's talk about boobs and bust darts. Mm. Um, 
so this pattern um, is meant to be oversized. And so I'm knitting it with a couple of inches of positive ease, which is fine. Um, but it doesn't have bust starts built into it. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's going to be oversized, but then I'm also concerned that because of my chest circumference that it's going to do weird things in the front, like lift yeah. it up, which is one of the reasons that I also did it on a provisional cast on. So I think I am going to put in some bust starts or at least short rows. I think I might do some short rows. Um, and I've never done that before. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a crap shoot to me. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So We'll see what happens. I've consulted a couple of other patterns that have mm -hmm. it in um, to look at them. And they seem to be top-down patterns. This is bottom-up, so that doesn't really apply. Um, I've also looked at a few other resources. So I'm going to list them down below. But Nitty has a really great tutorial article about knitting short row bust starts. Um, and they use like a shell, like a tank top pattern as an example. Um, Azolda Teague's Little Red in the City book is another mm -hmm. great... I've had that book for a really long time. And she talks a lot about design and how to go into designing your own patterns in addition to having patterns. Um, and I haven't used that book or knit really out of that book yet, but it does have, I would say five really good pages on just bus starts, um, vertical and horizontal. Um, so I'm going to consult that one. Um, I know Amy Herzog's knit to flatter also has some information. I have that book as well, but I haven't looked in depth in it. And there was also a Ravelry thread, which I'll list below that mm -hmm. talked about techniques and had some interesting sources in it. So that's where I got the nitty source. Um, and as being a person who over researches, I'm interested. So I want to know everything there is to know about short robust arts before I of actually course. do it because that's yeah. the nature of what I do. Um, so for people watching this, if you have really good resources, let me know. Cause I really would like to know. I probably won't get to the bus starts for at least another week or so. Um, but have you also knit butt starts in things? Because you've knit many more yeah. sweaters than I have. And what can you tell yeah. me about them? Are they scary or am I just overanalyzing no. things? Because that's what I do. No, they're not scary at all. And the two books that you have there, the Isolde Teague and the Amy Herzog, those are my go-to okay. for, for sweater fitting. So I think if you, if you follow what's in those, you're going to be in really good shape. All right. Good. Yeah, that's, that's what I've used. That's what I'm hoping. So we, I might just do the rest of the body and kind of see, mm -hmm. I might stop depending on where my brain is. Yeah. I think that's smart. Cause it kind of does take some wrapping of the brain around it. So especially if it's not built into the pattern, I can mm -hmm. do short rows. Aren't an issue for me, like wrapping and turning and doing German. Yeah. That's not an issue for me. Um, but it does require some concentration. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to give yourself a little bit of time to figure out the best move for your pattern in your body. Yeah. Because it's going to, it's going to vary. Absolutely. I, and I think that because I know I have to do some modifications based on like my chest area, or as the prairie girls say, the booble region, um, <laughs> which is one of my favorite terms. I think it's just very funny. <laughs> I think because I always know that I'm going to have to do some modification uh, modifications, I think that's actually kept me from knitting sweaters um, just because it's a time, how much it's going to cost for yarn. Um, but also mm -hmm. if I like a pattern, I know that I probably go am going to have to do some modifications. And if I buy a pattern, I don't really want to have to math that out. Um, yeah. That's just kind of, that's what I'm paying, hopefully the designer to do for me. Um, which is why I really do appreciate the number of designers, especially in like, we'll say the last month that have risen in popularity for their size and inclusivity. So mm -hmm. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think like, if you can get patterns that are already like in the ballpark for mm -hmm. you, then it's not so bad um, because like I'm, I'm finding that I really do need to pay attention to these things when I'm knitting a sweater. Otherwise, like I've knit a lot of sweaters that I'm not happy with the fit on and I don't wear and I've ripped out a whole bunch of them. Right. And I mean, after you put that much time into it, you do want to wear them. 
Exactly. And like, I don't have a size issue because like I'm in, you know, I'm normally like a smaller, a medium. And Mm -hmm. so like patterns are written for people my size. Um, So like that hasn't been an issue, but what's been an issue is me not taking the time to like really make sure that that off the rack, smaller medium is actually going to fit in my, my measurements. So, I mean, I think they're, I think they're both important. I think it's important for our pattern sizing to be inclusive and then also to like not just take that at face value. I agree. There's um, a pattern that I really, really want to cast on that's also really popular right now. It's a cropped sweater called Ursa. Um, And then it has a simpler, it has some brioche ribbing. Mm -hmm. And then it has a simpler version called Ursa Minor. Uh, The designer is Jacqueline, I forgot her last name, but it will be linked below. But she actually has like, she gives you instructions on cup sizes. And so she's Mm -hmm. built in bust starts. She tells you, first of all, how to measure. And if you have Mm -hmm. this kind of bust differential. And then she also talks about, I guess, bust differential. I'm not sure if that's an actual term, but whatever. We'll just use it. I mean, we all know what you mean. Right. So like between band size and Mm -hmm. actual measurement. And then she also has, she has, she goes like, a, B, B, C, C, D, mm-hmm. um, E, F, and G, H. So it has a really wide variety, which, um, and it's a top down. So that's why I couldn't really consult it for bus measure or bus things. But um, I really do appreciate that, that she's built in several mm-hmm. really good instructions for that. So, yeah. Okay. And I'll say, well, we're on the topic of boobs that. Um, for a sewing pattern company that gives you that same sort of flexibility, Mm -hmm. which a lot of them don't, you have to just like assume that it's made for a B cup. So I end up doing a lot of adjustments there. Um, but a company that's really doing some good stuff with that is called itch to stitch. And she does this thing where like you're choosing your general size for your pattern. And then she has different cup sizes. Nice. Top. So that's really nice. And it takes so much work. Like I didn't have to do much, if any, adjusting when I made a dress because she had already taken care of a full bust adjustment for me, essentially. Oh, very nice. I know mm-hmm. that Cashmereat Cashmere is another one that does that too. And those, yes, that's more towards like plus size sewists. She's um, so exclusively at plus size. Company. Yep. So that's the first company, but good to know about the other one. I'm going to have mm-hmm. you add that one to the show notes so I can pop it down below too. Yes, I will. I don't know how high her sizing goes. Though. That's okay. So but I think I if it had, even if that, it had but... like good instructions on it, mm-hmm. um, that might also be helpful. So yeah, cool. I also wanted to point out one last thing. So we don't often mm-hmm. show uh, the bags or what our knitting is being held in unless Cheryl makes it because she makes beautiful things. <laughs> but um, I wanted to show you a bag that I've repurposed. So it's more of a bucket. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it's from Ikea. It was like two bucks. Um, I needed to round out the order. So <laughs> so it folds. It comes folded flat, which is why you can see some of the... That's really cute. Oh, look at that. Element. Yeah, so this is holding all of my yarn and my sweater for... Um, all of the yarn for my sweater and as well as the pattern. So this just sits on the floor next to me, next to like the chair that I knit in. And I have to say it's pretty helpful. When I want to take the sweater somewhere, I'll pop it into a normal project bag with one of the skeins, but I don't need to take like all of the skeins with me when I go. Mm -hmm. Cause that's a little excessive. All right. So that's all I'm working on. What are you working on? Okay. I only have one thing, although I am, I'm working on that cross stitch that I showed a couple of episodes ago, but like, it's so hard to see progress on cross stitch unless you're the one (laughs) doing the cross stitch. So I'm not going to show that. Um, so my theme for April, which is break month for the house cup, which we'll talk about in our little discussion segment, (laughs) um, is finish some old shit. Sorry. I like that that theme. Sorry if the swear makes me, I don't know, change our YouTube, whatever. Um, so the cross stitch is old shit, like super old shit. And then I have to show my project bag because I really like this one. This That's is so one cute. I'm in, and I love this print. So I'm actually in part making this project because I want the project bag back. <laughs> my normal <laughs> rotation. This is um, this is my only whip left over from my days working in the yarn shop. So wow. I've said before 
that I moved a ton of whips with me when I started my PhD program, which kept me busy for a while without spending right. money. So that was a good thing. Um, so being it, um, um, not a monogamous knitter can actually be really good, even if you don't finish yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know how many I had. I know I had enough that when, peop when people would come into the yarn shop and be like, oh, I have so many projects already. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Eat. Don't you many. worry about how it. How many do you have? Yeah. Oh, you have five. That's that's adorable. I have five with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I moved a lot of them out to Pittsburgh with me. I finished a lot of them there, but I did move um, some back with me. And this is the last one. Wow. Um, for you. I know. So these are, I've got them three quarters of the way done. These are traveling stitch leg warmers. Those are, that my, cable is stunning. I want a close up of that. Yeah. So they are twisted stitches. This is the back. So this is um this is twisted stitches that are also functioning as calf shaping. Nice. Um and she calls this part of the pattern the lozenge because of its shape and they also have twisted stitches on the front. Oh, that's so beautiful. Like straight up um twisted stitch pattern whereas this one shifts for the calf shaping. Um so th these have a long history that I'm not going to go into right now. And I'll be real honest, like, I'm not super interested in knitting them. I started these um, at a time when I was really into, like, complicated traveling stitch mm -hmm. type patterns. And I'm not doing as much of that anymore. So I'm not super excited about them. But I am super excited about not having them in my knitting basket anymore. And also, I needed something to do with myself. So, this is what I decided to do with myself. And I'm this far into okay. the second one. So, that's what I've been working on now. I had cast this on a while ago. So, I did not start this from scratch when I picked it up again this month. Um, but I... So, I was like, okay, I need something to knit. I'll, I'll grab that because I feel like doing sort of small circumference knitting right now. And I had originally... Um, so back up, Cheryl, the background for these is a reverse stockinette stitch. Yeah. All the way around. Um, I do not normally have an issue with laddering on double pointed needles, but I very much do when it's on reverse stockinette. Interesting. So I, yes. So that showed up. Um, plus DPNs don't work very well with this crazy traveling stitch pattern because you'd be moving across needles. Right. So they're not the best choice for this project. I dislike magic loop. I dislike two circs. So I didn't want to do either of those, but this was, um, I started this project. I'm going to date it. It's on Ravelry. Any, anybody can find it anyway. I started this project when nine inch circular needles started to come on the scene. So um, I wound up after I realized that DPNs weren't going to work, I wound up buying from, I think our first shipment, maybe our second of Haya Haya nine inch circular needles, tiny, tiny. Um, and so this is what I knit the first one and a good chunk of the second one on. I picked this up the other night and started knitting on it. I got one row in and I was like, I hate this. Like I just hated working on this project it was not fun. And I was like, Oh, like, so I'm kind of in too deep on it because I already have one done and these are pretty labor intensive. So can I have you pause just for a second? So yeah. you've used nine inch circs before, um, and you yeah. have knit socks on them, I believe. Mm -hmm. Correct. So what do you think the shift was between, um, using a nine inch circ going from working to suddenly, well now years later, like I absolutely hate these. What do you yeah. think? what do you think either happened or why do you find that you suddenly don't like them as much? So I don't know that I loved them before for this project, for this project in particular. So I do want to say, um, I think for some people, these are a good option. And if you're interested in trying them, I think it's worth trying out. I will say though, that when I work with these needles, so normally I would have all of my fingers on the needle I kick these back fingers that I don't actually use in my knitting outside of the circular needle. So they're not holding on because they don't really fit. They're sort of outside, mm -hmm. if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And I found that that's a way that I can actually make these needles work for me because a lot of people find that there's just like too much finger to fit Same. 
in the circumference. So that's something that's helped me. If you want to give it, um, give nine inch circulars a try, I would suggest. So, and I, I will say like, I have tried nine inch circulars, but I have really big fingers and I do use my whole hand. Mm. And so I don't like using nine inch circulars, even with tucking my fingers because my tension then goes all over the place. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not just looser or tighter. It is literally all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They don't work for a lot of people, but the people who they do work for love them. them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's worth giving a try if you're, if you're nine inch circular curious. Um, so (laughs) what I think is going on with this is that, um, this is a traveling stitch pattern, not, I'm not cabling. Like I'm not using a toothpick cable needle to do this. I'm twisting the stitches. So in order to do that, you kind of have to have some torque yeah. on your needles. And so I think the issue is that I've got these itty bitty needles that are what two inches long at most. Right. And so I just can't really get that torque Yeah. in a way that feels comfortable. So I think that's what's going on with these. So I decided to do something kind of crazy and use my Addy flexi flips that I had been using for those socks. Right. And try those out. And those have been working better. I still, I'm still not totally loving knitting on this project, but now I'm just like, okay, I'm at a place where I can like get through and finish the darn thing. Right. Yeah. You can see that you can actually make progress without actually hating every single stitch you're working on. Exactly. Now I was kind of naughty and those high highs are size one and the flexi flips are size zero, but they're Addies. So it's actually just like a quarter millimeters different. Plus these are metal and those are bamboo. So it's kind of working out. Like I think it's probably fine. Well, and your gauge may have changed over time too. Exactly. Now I will say, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but there is some laddering there. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, so you can I can see actually that now see. that you're pointing it out. You can see where I started working on the flexi flips right. instead of on the the high highs. And I knew that that was probably going to happen given that it did when I started the project on double pointed. And I just decided, you know what, it's worth it to have this one done because right. it's something that like, I don't want to rip out, but I'm not super enthusiastic about knitting. So I decided to just, just do it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm scooting along on these. Um, and this is really my only knitting project right now. So I'm hopeful that I will finish them this time without shoving them back into the basket, but I make no promises. So, well, to bastardize Vol- Voltaire, um, done is better than perfect. Yeah. How high do those go up? Do those go up over the knee? Because they the first one looked really, really long. I don't think they're meant to. Let's see. Oh, sure enough, they might. Yeah. I guess they okay. kind of go partway over her knee. I don't know. I don't even know if these are for me, to be honest. it's This project is a long story. I don't know if they're going to stay with me or be, like, tucked away for a gift. I'm just going to call you out on this right now because I'm actually looking at your pattern page. You cast these on in 2008. 2008. So go ahead and make fun of me for all of my long-term whips. You have some longer-term whips than I do. This is one. (laughs) My four-year socks are nothing on these. One. And this is my oldest one. And I'm finishing it, Katie. I'm glad. I'm so proud of you. They're gorgeous. They are absolutely stunning. They are. Just I. You're over them. I'm over them, and I want them to just like give me my project bag back. I get that. All right, so let's jump in. So I'm going to be optimistic here and say, at some point, we are going to get summer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Notice, I'm, I would think so. I'm not tying down a day to that or a time period, uh, mainly because I don't want another blizzard. Thank you. To be fair. Oh, and we're also in break month for Harry Potter Harry Potter Knit and Crochet House Cup. I have to think about that every single time I say it and spell it out. Um, I'm like, which order do all mm-hmm. the letters go in? So we're yeah. on break month. That will start up. Um, summer term begins in May and goes May, yes. June, July. Um, sorting right now. Sorting is right now. I should go do that because I forgot right. to get sorted last term. Uh, I can't remember what the deadline is. You should look. 
Okay. Because I think it's probably coming up. Probably. Um, I used to be on the, hey, ping me when this is happening, but I didn't get a ping last time, and I think that's what happened. Mm. Anyway. So one of the things that you can do is do longer-term projects in the summer. And so those are called OWLs. So it's a three-month-long project. Mm -hmm. There's a cat right behind the screen, like, holding, putting her face right next to it, staring at it. It's kind of creepy. So I see Cheryl's face, like, right here, and Gigi's face, like, right here. <laughs> um, so OWLs require some planning because you have to propose it. You have to do a swatch. Um, there are different categories and kind of classes that you can go into. And so um, – I know Cheryl has done an owl. I believe you've done an owl almost every term. A lot or of proposed terms. at least an owl. I've failed a lot of them. I've proposed two and failed them both. <laughs> As in, by fail, it doesn't mean like I'm kick we're kicked out of the house. It means that you just don't finish them. So yeah, um, and you don't get the fake internet points, which is a real problem, right? And we, I, I have to say, like we are motivated by fake internet points. I'm oddly much competitive in that way. Mm-hmm. Cause I want those points. <laughs> yeah. Um and some people are in it for the badges. I don't even care about the badges. I don't badges. care about the badges. It's like they're the like, points. oh, you want a badge? That's great. I'm like, okay. Super. <laughs> I want the points. Yes. <laughs> so um summer traditionally is a time for me where I get a lot of my knitting done, whether that's finishing projects or working on big projects. Um I have also done stash dash in the past. Informally, I did stash dash last year. I just don't post anything about it. But I like to keep track of my yardage because why not? Numbers. It's a data collection. Um, so I've been thinking about what kinds of things that I want to do and what kind of things I want to work on. And basically, my plan for this summer is all the machine knitting because I want to make yeah. through some of my a significant portion of my blanket stash. And then also all the sweaters right now. Like... And I am serious about my sweaters right now here. I'm so happy. So in the last week, not since we've not, um, yeah, not since, not in like the two weeks since we recorded last, in the last week, I have knit some swatches. <laughs> so, and let me point out that this red swatch, yes, it was done in four needle sizes, but it's also for two different sweaters that I was swatching for. <laughs> So like one, two, so two, three, this one I'm working on already for, and then this one is for the Ursa sweater. It's out of a bucky. We finally got you. Oh my gosh. And so I've done decent size swatches, not like, okay, this one was a crappy size swatch, but mainly because I knew I was going to get gauge right away. Um, But like these two, I am also... And I'll say this one. I'm going to toss in the washing machine because this is a cotton. This is a super wash yarn, a super wash bulky wool. And I'm going to toss these in the machine and on gentle and just have the water spin them out and lay them flat to dry because that's probably how I'm going to wash them. So yeah. I'm like going a little crazy on my swatching. Yay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Other than that, I, so I have a list of sweaters that I want to work on. Ursa is one of them. Um, I want to do at least one fingering weight sweater. I'm going to see if I can do that one on the machine because knitting, hand knitting a fingering weight sweater does not appeal to me in any way, shape, or form, except the wearing of it. Um, and then I have a couple of sport DK ones. So that's kind of, I'm trying to decide, you can only propose one owl a term. And so I'm just trying to decide if I want to do a blanket one um, mm -hmm. or a sweater one. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm going right now. How about you? You are much more um, direct and specific in your planning. I'm a planner. I know what you are. Say. Like, how many Trello, how how have you used Trello this week to do your planning <laughs> for your knitting? I have these projects on Trello already. They're in my knitting queue <laughs> section on Trello. So, um, yeah, I'm also planning to propose an owl and... Um, I'm a little bummed because my dorm in Ravenclaw is doing, um, is doing a boxy along. Oh, cute. And I do want to do a boxy, but I don't have the yarn for it on hand. And I really need to do those scarves that I talked about last time for my dissertation right. members. So I'm prioritizing that and I'll probably get to a boxy someday. 
so um, I decided I haven't nailed down all of those patterns yet. I'm still figuring out the last two, but I had already decided, I can't remember if I said this in our last episode, but um, I'm planning to do for my chair, the Quay scarf by Jared Flood. And that's a heavily cabled scarf. Um, and it just like the Jared Flood aesthetic is appropriate for him. I think. Yeah. So I think it'll be a good fit. Um, like he's from Portland and Austin. Jared Flood is a good fit for that. I think. Um, so I started with that one and I was like, okay, I know I want to make that one. Plus it's for my chair. So I definitely need to get that done. Cause he's like the one who's <laughs> helped me the most. Um, so I figured I would start there and then I had, I was still sort of figuring out what I wanted to do for the others. And I decided to just say, okay, Quay fits nicely into the owl subject that deals with cables. So let Mm -hmm. me just like limit my search on Ravelry to cabled scarves and shawls and see what that Ah, brings up. If anything, if anything sort of sparks for me, because like, that's not normally how I search for patterns, but I was like, well, we'll give it a shot. (laughs) And I came across a shawl pattern called Almina by Lisa Hannes. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Lisa. Thanks for your shawl pattern. Um, so it has, it's a cable pattern, but it has sort of an arrow chevron kind of shape mm-hmm. to it. And I think it'll work really well for my committee member who has sort of like a simple, modern kind of aesthetic because she can pull off something that um that's simple but still sort of bold right so i think i'm gonna do that and it's still cables and it's worsted weight so yay that (laughs) so it's gonna be two cabled um worsted weight projects um and the reason i think actually quay might have been enough for me personally for an owl but the cable one you have to have uh there's a yardage minimum for it 1200 yards so I had to add a second one so that's feeling like kind of a lot of knitting for me just given um life right now right so I'm not I'm not completely confident in my ability to finish it but I also enjoy cabling so I'm hoping that I just enjoy it enough that I keep cruising along well and I think that it can get addicting enough like you've yeah. You know, that you can keep working on it. For me, the shawl would be easier, even though it's more yardage, um, mm-hmm. because I don't like flipping my work all the time. For I don't. Scarf. I don't and that's either. Just, narrow rectangles are not for me. No, I, I actually agree with you. But I mean, he's going to wear a scarf. Right. So I'm making an exception for him. So when you propose a, an owl, you have to propose a 50% mark because you get points for getting to 50% yep. on your. Um, and I will probably say in the proposal itself, one of them finished, but I'm going to start with Quay because it's the one that I know is going to be more difficult to finish just because it's going to be the same thing repeated for an entire length of the project as opposed to the shape changing. So I think it'll be good to take care of that one first and make sure it gets done. I agree with you. Absolutely. And I think both of those are going to be good options. Mm Mm-hmm. I think they'll be really nice. So I need to find yarn for both of them. Um, Almina is going to be like a tonal gray, I think. Okay. Because she's a neutrals kind of person. I'm thinking maybe Malabrigo Rios, but I don't know what they have for grays. So one thing to consider for that, though, is how how many skeins it requires and whether or not that tonal gray, you're going to have to alternate skeins. Yeah. So that's something to consider there. I don't totally mind alternating skeins. Okay. Because I do most of my knitting at home right now. So okay. I'm not super concerned. So that's not a big deal. Fun. And then, okay, the quay I could actually use help with on the yarn um, because he's using his own yarn. Is it Shelter? Is yeah. Is that the worst one? So he's using Shelter, which is lovely. Yes. I'm not sure that I want to use Shelter. I think I might want something that... I like the tweed in it, mm-hmm. but I think I want like a tweed that's not super rustic. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like a fancy tweed. A fancy tweed. Like a, like something. So like, like he's got a more casual style, but he's also like, you know, this well-respected scholar. So I don't want anything that's like super casual. I right. want something 
he's able to just like wear with his winter jacket. So you have a couple of, uh, are you wanting it super wash or doesn't that matter? <laughs> anyway, so for yarn, um, you could go with like, uh, I'm going to Quince and Company right now, just kind of as my mm -hmm. initial thought, because they have a great twist. So mm -hmm. Quince and Company Lark has a really lovely twist. Um, and it comes in great colors. Um, Lark would be the worst weight, but it's not Tweety. If you're wanting mm -hmm. something more heathered or... Uh, Osprey, I think, is more heathered than anything. But that's their Erin weight. That's also very mm -hmm. beautiful. And then if you're wanting tweed, Plymouth actually makes a wonderful yarn called Homestead. And it's a two yes. ply that has a lot of tweedy colors in it, actually. Okay. And so I think those would be really great options. I really like working with Homestead and I haven't for a while. It's a, it's one of my favorites. I would say it can, it often wins out for me against Cascade right now. But it's less wi widely available, at least where I've shopped. That's true. Yeah. We, it's something that we carry in our store um, at Yarn Harbor. So we carry a lot of colors in it too. Um, well, I'll just have to go up to Duluth. Oh, darn. Hopefully not in the next two weeks. Or maybe I'll have you mule it down to me because you're coming down. <laughs> it depends what color you want, but yeah. <laughs> um, that's not a hard one because, you know, it's not like I'm going to stop at the yarn store before I see you before <laughs> the harvest. Um, yeah. Hmm, that's yeah, so that's where I, I'm at right now. What else is out there? Because I'm just, yeah. I mean, with us, with our, I think we have a pretty good knowledge of what yarn is out there but also I recognize that most of my knowledge is based on what comes into the store yeah. um and where kind of I usually shop and so yeah. I kind of wonder what else is out there yeah I'm gonna have to do some looking around and also I'm finding that it's really important to look at finished projects on Ravelry because yeah. I don't want something that's like too tweety like some of them have a ton of those flex and it's almost distracting Especially yeah. with a pattern. I agree. So it's like I need just the right tweed. Right. If I do tweed, I would be open to a heather. Well, and it depends on whether the recipient is going to... Some people really like to pick out like those little pieces of lint, but it's like, but that's what makes the yarn so special. And the yarn, they like to pick out the tweed. So that's another thing to consider. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're just coming up with our summer planning of sorts. Scheming. Oh, <laughs> oh, to a time when I have some free time. That's really what I'm going towards. Um, and moving. I have, I would like to move a tote worth of, I would like to knit up a tote's worth of yarn this summer. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. Yeah. Machine knitting definitely helps with that. I'm not going to lie. But you've really arrived when you can measure your knitting in totes. Well, that's currently what my yarn storage is in and mine too. And I have two totes of blanket stuff right now. And I'm like, I don't want that many. Yeah. I want like half of that. Yeah. Preferably quarter of that or none of that. <laughs> It's one of those things like, oh, I don't, I know I don't like knitting blankets, but like, I swear the yarn just keeps multiplying and I don't know how it happens. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and sweater quantities, I have all the sweater quantities I need for casting on things. So that's, that's great. That's great. I just need to use that yarn. Yeah. So transfigure it out of my <laughs> stash. Transfiguration is one of the... Um, classes that I'm looking to use for my owl this summer. Like using sense. 1,800 yards or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think, though, if I machine knit, it has to be much larger. That's probably true. I'm going to guess it's going to be closer to about 3,000. Mm. I do hand finishing on all my blankets, though, so I feel like that won't make it super obnoxious the number of yards I have to do, but we'll see. You could just like run a search in those threads in the group and see, um, like run a search for transfiguration and machine knitting and see what I people did. have got approved. Did you? Good. Um, I looked at the last one and there wasn't 
for the Transfiguration one in particular, there wasn't, there, it was a garment that was machine knit mm-hmm. and not a blanket. So I'm going to have to go back through the other threads, I think. Yeah. To see how that goes or ask my person in charge of, so this is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. How do you think? Oh yeah. They're super helpful. Yeah. So, all right. I should go get sorted then. And deal yes, with that. Yes, you should. Go so fill out I don't the have form. To run as a student on sabbatical again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say to recruit people for House Cup. If you have read the Harry Potter books, that's awesome. We fully support that. Um, I really like how House Cup gives you a goal of what you need to compl- to complete a project in a month. Um, yeah. You have to complete at least one class a month and you can usually pick whatever you want to knit. And as long as you complete it in a month, there's a way to make it. You can spin the um, project to fit a certain prompt. Um, And they're usually pretty wide open prompt. Like I think it was one last term. There was one was make three of something. Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't matter what, as long as it's three of something. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great way to quantify your knitting. Or if you want to see, am I actually completing things? Or if you too are motivated by fake internet points. (laughs) Like we are. Like we are. Uh Uh-huh. I think I got something like 400 last year, last summer. My goal is to beat that. It's good. That's super good. Anyway. All right. Um, I've got nothing else. Do you? No, that covers it. All right. Well, have a good week and have a good birthday. I Thank hope you, you get your donuts and take lots of pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us know if you have any resources for bust darts and drop them down below in a comment uh, because that's really appreciated <laughs> as well. All right. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye.